Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the source of all goodness and love. We thank you for your faithful, loyal love towards us. You who made all creation, you who have given us life, we thank you. Our Lord Jesus, you gave your life on the cross to save us, and we bless you for that faithful love. Forgive us our sins against you and against others, and turn us to righteousness and to love and faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading today comes from Proverbs in chapter 20. I'm beginning to read at verse 1. Let us hear God's word. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath is like the roar of a lion. He who angers him forfeits his life. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. A sluggard does not plow in season, so at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. The purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. The righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. When a king sits on the throne to judge, he winnows out evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Even a child is known by his actions and whether his conduct is pure and right. Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer. Then off he goes to boast about his purchase. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man, but he ends up with a mouthful of gravel. Make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. If a man curses his father or mother, his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. The Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not please him. A man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? It is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider his vows. A wise king winnows out the wicked. He drives the threshing wheel over them. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of man. It searches out his inmost being. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe, though love, through love his throne is made secure. The glory of young men is their strength, gray hair, the splendor of the old. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil, and beatings purge the inmost being. Amen. May God bless this reading of his word to our hearts and our minds. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, forgive us for the times when we have forgotten love and faithfulness. Help us to understand that we are to seek the good of others, even those who consider themselves our enemies, and to know that this is your very own way. Help us to build one another up and encourage one another, and may we be straight dealing with one another and genuinely learn to care about the good of each other, that we may behave to each other as children of your own. 
Father, help us to watch our own hearts and to learn how to read and understand them, that we may choose that which is righteous and good and serve you with our whole hearts. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for healing for those who are suffering illness and for help to those who are depressed or disturbed in their minds. We pray for wisdom for our leaders as they lead to a reopening and lifting of restrictions. And we pray, Lord, that you would be gracious to those who have suffered loss and are grieving, lifting their hearts to Christ in faith. We pray for the people of the world in every land, for freedom to live and resources for livelihood. We pray for the ending of tyranny and the release of the oppressed. Lord, unite and strengthen your people and return, Lord Jesus, soon for the good of your church and the glory of your name. Amen. As we continue in Proverbs, we have dealt with the ten tools of wisdom and how to use those. And the Proverbs have helped us to understand that and open it up much more. Um, We're going to move into a different section of Proverbs. If the first section deals with the ten tools of wisdom and how to kind of conduct ourselves in the world, the second section uh, moves more towards how we can influence the world and how through wisdom we ought to change and look at the world and how to live more widely uh, in our society. But between that section and the first section, we have uh, a a couple of chapters in which we look, as it were, at the, the very basis of things. Um, You may remember that in one of the sermons I talked about how uh, pilots are told to remember uh, in the midst of an emergency to aviate first, that is fly the plane first, and then to navigate and think about where they are going uh, to get a situational awareness of where they are and where they are headed, um, and having aviated and navigated then to communicate. um, But to put aviation first, fly the plane first, And we've seen throughout the book of Proverbs that to fly the plane first in in this sense of wisdom means to control our own wills and hearts. Um, The the Lord tells us uh, that we ought to watch our wills, our intent, our hearts, for they are the wellspring of our souls. And we've seen time and time again in Proverbs that this is a heart thing. Heart in the sense of that part of you that makes decisions and chooses your course. Um, But Proverbs also tells us that the heart is a deceitful thing, uh, that our own wills may deceive us. So between taking us from the ten tools of wisdom and then on into how to uh, look at the world more widely, uh, there is a kind of refresher course. Remember to fly your own aircraft first. Get control of your own will. And that's what we're going to be looking at in these chapters. So the thought is your heart and your will, protecting it from things that may trap it, having a sense of what your heart and will is, and watching and paying attention to it. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler, says the Proverbs. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. It is your will, it is your heart, and you do not wish to give it up to alcohol. Now, we we understand this proverb and what it means. We understand how alcoholism can be a real problem. And even uh, where someone is is not classed as alcoholic, uh, still, uh, even in the moments of drinking and so on, we can lose control. Uh, So the first thing that the proverbs say here is simply, don't lose control to alcohol. But more than that, there are more things in our lives that we can lose control to. Uh, There are more things that can be addictive, more things that we can ruin our bodies and our minds with. Um, So consider before the Lord uh, the things that drive you and, uh, and realize that you want to watch your heart in all of this. It is control of your own will. It's your heart and your will given to you by God. 
We saw last time we were looking at the Proverbs that we aren't to be influenced by how other people live their lives. We're to live our lives to God. He expects us to live our lives and to be responsible for them. It is your will, it is your heart. Do not give it up to alcohol. But there are other things that we can lose control to. We can lose control to anger. A king's wrath is like the roar of a lion. He who angers him forfeits his life. It is a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to the quarrel. Do not provoke the king, that is law, against yourself, nor get into arguments. Anger, it has been said, or hatred is the weapon that must pierce your own heart before it touches anyone else. We are not to lose control of our will through our actions provoking others or through our actions of getting into fights and quarrels. Proverbs has said this many times, but this is particularly here about watching your own will, your own heart. Um, In the New Testament, Peter says, what causes quarrels and fights among you? It is that you cannot get what you want and therefore you quarrel and fight. There are two reasons for war. Aggrandizement, somebody wants something and takes it, and fear of another's aggrandizement. You're afraid that they will come and take it. We are to be in control of our own wills and not allow anger any more than alcohol to be in control of our wills and our hearts. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to the quarrel. But it is not only to these things that we can lose control of our own lives and our own will. A sluggard does not plow in season, so at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. The sluggard does not plow in season, so at harvest time he looks for where his food's coming from and there isn't anything because he didn't plant it. And of course, that applies not just to farming and harvest, but uh, Proverbs has taught us to apply that more widely, that we are to set our will to some practical end and do some work. Life is to be lived. We aren't supposed to just uh, wait for things to fall into our laps. We are supposed to do work. And in this context, we could think of it as doing the work of watching our own hearts and minds and wills. But in reality, we can lose control if we don't take control. We can lose control of life if we aren't planting for the future, if we aren't thinking about what we're doing for the future. The sluggard doesn't plant and therefore has no harvest. We might be uh, able to lose control to alcohol or to anger But what about to laziness? What about to procrastination? We might not think of that as losing control of our own wills, but actually it is. We might fail to understand our heart and our will. The purposes of a man's heart are deep waters. Proverbs has used that picture before. What goes on in us is deep water. But a man of understanding draws out those purposes. Now, Proverbs has applied that to drawing out those purposes when you look at what other people are looking at and what their intention is and having a a sense of whether they seek to do evil or seek to do good. But here I think we should reflect upon our own hearts and wills. You know, my own heart and will is deep water to me. Yours is to you ever found yourself in a situation saying, I don't know why I said that, that's not like me. Well, how could it not be like you? You said it. Ever found yourself regretting something? The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but a person of understanding doesn't just let them remain deep waters. He draws out what his purposes are. He seeks to understand. And what he learns 
if uh, a person truly looks at these things, a person will learn that many a person claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. This could be applied to other people, but I think we're meant to apply it to ourselves to learn and understand ourselves and assess ourselves and assess others too by our wills and by them by their wills. We are less faithful than we like to imagine ourselves to be, less righteous than we tell ourselves we are. Everyone thinks he's okay, right? Except, no, they don't. Sometimes we get a shock when we see how others truly perceive us. But if we had plumbed the depths of our own hearts, maybe we would have seen it sooner. The Lord, by his Spirit and by his Word, can reveal to us the truth of the deep waters of our own wills and hearts. He can show us our sin lead us to redemption and forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Many of us would say we were faithful, but are we? Failure to understand our own wills or our own hearts might mean that we also have failure to judge them. The righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. That's correct, right? That makes sense. The righteous man, well, he's righteous, so he will lead a blameless life, right? And, and that will certainly lead to his children praising him and being happy, and, uh, and they will learn righteousness from him. So how well have you done then? If, if you know that a righteous person leads a blameless life, how well have you done? If you know that a righteous person will lead a blameless life, judge your own. There's the standard. The righteous person would lead a blameless life, bringing nothing but blessing to generations after him. Measure yourself. When a king sits on his throne to judge, he winnows out all evil with his eyes. Well, are you a king on your throne? Are you a king on your throne able to judge yourself? To winnow out the evil of your own deeds and your own thinking in your own life. To watch your heart. Well, who can say, I have kept my heart pure. I am clean and without sin. No one. The question is supposed to be answered with no one. If we sit true as kings, as true judges of ourselves on our own wills and hearts, we will not come out saying, I have kept my heart pure. I am clean and without sin. We'll come out saying exactly the opposite. No, I am not. I am a sinner. I have sinned. I can look at my own will and my own actions and intentions and thoughts, and I know that they have been sinful. Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. It's a proverb that has come up many times, but here it comes to this. Aren't we a little bit biased when it comes to judging ourselves? Well, who else would we be biased about? Of course we are biased. Do we use different scales in judging our own words and actions than we use for other people? Well, listen, differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Do we see the speck in the other person's eye while wandering about with a great big plank sticking out of ours? Do we use differing weights and measures in judging what our husband has done or said or our wife has done or said or our children have done or said and yet not judge ourselves the same? Once in English class, uh, (laughs) our English teacher said to some boys they shouldn't do such and such and they said, sir, you do that. And he he said, do as I say, not as I do. 
differing weights and measures. The Lord detests them both. Can we be impartial in looking at ourselves? Even a child is known by his actions, by whether his conduct is pure and right. Yeah, we judge children maybe too harshly, maybe too easily and too quickly because we can. But if we took the rules that we apply to children and apply them to ourselves, maybe we would learn a great deal. But the point is, if you really want to see what your heart, that deep water of your heart is wanting, look at your actions. What were you doing today? What were you avoiding doing? If you want to see what your heart is doing, where its intention is, look at what you're doing. Even children, how do you know what they think? Isn't it by their actions? Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. And we are supposed to hear and see. This not in the sense of just having sight or having hearing. We are supposed to be able to see what is going on in our own hearts and wills. But they are made by the Lord and so is our ability to see ourselves. So ask the Lord's grace, the Lord's grace to see yourself, not as others see you, but as he does. You will find there greater judgment than any other person places on you and greater mercy than you would show yourself. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. Well, we've seen uh, Proverbs about the sluggard, but here it applies directly to judging your own will. Stay awake to what you're thinking and doing. Pay attention to the young pilot who is learning to fly or the young driver who is learning to drive. You say, pay attention to the road, pay attention to the skies, pay attention to your instruments, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. Remember that the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and it will deceive you. Learn to see sin and to see yourself. Failure to understand our hearts, failure to judge them, failure to stick to truth and reality. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer. Then off he goes and boasts about his purchase. Ah, that's no good. No, no, that deal won't do. That deal won't do. And then to other people, he'll go and say, that was a great deal. Will you hear the great deal that I did? Well, failure to stick to truth. And surely you say, well, you know, buyer beware or uh, seller beware. Surely in business at least, no. No. That's the whole point, to stick to the truth to see reality, to know what it is. Not to say it's no good, it's no good, and then it was good, but to see it as it is, whether you're buying or selling. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. It's a rare thing for us to be able to be absolutely true about ourselves and to speak with real knowledge and sense about ourselves. Such eye, such insight, such hearing, such understanding comes from God. To have real knowledge about yourself is a rare jewel. To know and see things as they really are. Take the garment of the one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. This is a striking proverb because it goes against a command of God. It is an Old Testament command that you do not hold your brother's coat if it's in pledge for a loan. You let the brother have it back when he needs it. So this is a striking proverb because what it's actually saying is, see how things are in reality. If someone 
has put up security, not for someone that they know, but for a stranger, for uh, a wayward woman, if it's, it's being used for some evil device. If, if they are acting foolishly, see it and teach them the lesson of their foolishness. Failure to understand our heart, failure to judge our will, failure to stick to truth and reality about ourselves. You know, we can fool ourselves It's not your brother's coat that's in danger, it's yours. Are you able to teach yourself the lessons of righteousness? Now that the Lord has shown you that this is right and this is wrong, can you watch your will and choose what is right? Or will you have to learn the lesson and lose your coat? Food gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man, but he ends up with a mouthful of gravel. Keep your eye on reality and know the difference between what gets said and what is correct. Watch your will. Watch your heart. How do you watch it? Same way you watch a child's, by seeing what they do. Failure to understand our hearts, failure to judge them, failure to stick to truth and reality in our own minds, failure to learn how to listen to uh, advice and whom to listen to advice from. Make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. It can be helpful, especially in obtaining uh, guidance for war against your own will and heart, to know what you're really thinking, to talk it through, to have someone you can open up to, to get advice on things is great. But here's the other side. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid the one who talks too much. We need to know where to get advice and help, and we can always have it from the Lord. We need to know whose advice is good and wise, and we need to know when someone is simply going to betray confidence. We need to learn how to listen and to whom we should listen if we are to watch and guide our hearts. Be glad of advice, ask for it, but know when it's just talk. Perhaps at the heart of all of this, this failure to understand our hearts, this failure to judge our hearts, this failure to stick to truth and reality or uh, taking advice from the wrong sources, maybe all of it is because of a failure to realize the gift of life and its giver. If a man curses his father or mother, his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. The Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not please him. A man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? It is a trap for a man to dedicate to something rashly, only later to consider his vows. To keep your heart right, to truly watch it and understand it, your heart must be set upon God. Your life was not given to you by you. It came at the very least from your father and your mother. And if you neglect the reality of who you are and what you are and where you came from, then you're forgetting that your life is a gift not from your father and mother first, but from God himself. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. You know, sometimes you can come into money and it's easy to spend it because, you know, it never really felt like you earned it. Much easier to spend someone else's money than your own. Here's the thing, though. Is that how we treat life? It's such a gift. Do we treat it as if it meant nothing? Or are we wise enough to realize that we need that life to be blessed at the end? To be judged by God and therefore blessed or judged to condemnation. Life is a gift, but it is a gift given in trust and you hand it back at the end. 
Don't say, I'll pay you back for this wrong wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. Other people's lives are gifts too. Is a fundamental reason we're bad at judging our own hearts and wills simply because we forget that this is God's gift. The reason we're biased about ourselves because we forget that actually we are to be judged. We are to be weighed in the balance, so we should do it ourselves. Are we too quickly willing to dedicate ourselves and our lives to something and only later consider what we've done? Do we not understand then that our lives are a gift of God and we return them to him? The Lord will determine your steps. Do you really think you know your own way? You won't make your own way. He will choose your steps. Life is a gift given in trust. And therefore we ought to judge our hearts and wills before him who gave us the gift. Keep your heart right. Keep it on God. And therefore, the the key thing, if you like, if you were telling someone how to drive this car or how to fly this plane, the key thing is, has said, it is love and faithfulness towards God and the growth of that love and faithfulness over the lifetime that you've been gifted. A wise king winnows out the wicked, he drives the threshing wheel over them. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man, it searches out his inmost being. Actually, that's a proverb that is difficult to translate in some ways. There's a, an alternative translation in the NIV. But the, the clear intent is that our spirit is known to the Lord's spirit. And that, in fact, what is the deep waters to us is actually well known to him. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe, and through love his throne is made secure. This is love and faithfulness is Hesed, a love for God, a faithfulness to him, a loyalty to him. The glory of young men is their strength, grey hair is the splendor of the old. You know, when we're young, we have strength uh, in our older years. If, if we live to our older years, we'll have the grey hair, that is the experience, that's what it really refers to. Strength is what young men have. Uh, Strength is what young women have. But experience is what we have as we grow older. And we are to use that experience, that life experience, to deepen our hesed, our love for God and our loyalty and faithfulness to him. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil and beatings purge the inmost being. Even the tough things of life, the things that beat us, teach us if we are looking to grow our love and loyalty and faithfulness to the Lord. Your heart is the wellspring of your soul. Protect it and grow it. It's more important than money or status and even more important than the beatings of life if they knock nonsense out of us and sin out of us. Paul put it this way, these light and momentary troubles are winning for us a weight of glory far beyond compare. In Christ, we are indeed to deepen our love and our fellowship with the Lord. We are to grow it and live it. Watch your heart. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy to us in Jesus Christ, our Saviour, and that in him there is always forgiveness. We thank you that you are able to reveal to us the purposes of our heart, and we ask that by your word and spirit you would do so. Help us to watch our hearts, that we may will with your will, and have a heart after your own heart. Amen. That's what Jesus said I am the way, the truth and the life That's what Jesus said